The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Praise God. Hallelujah. Cabiosio. Cabiosio. You are the God of heaven and the earth. Cabio. Bless him this morning, give him praise and give him glory. The second day of this breakthrough conference, a breakthrough weekend. Give him the praise that is due his name. Celebrate him for the gift of life, the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank him for yesterday. Thank him for celebrating his death. Thank him. Give him praise for the opportunity of being born again, actually. It's a privilege. The Bible says it's not like we chose him, but he chose us. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Be thou glorified. Shambarababa. We give you praise. Nendo kabalasia pronactos. Somebody go on ahead with and in thanksgiving. Before we go into the teaching of the word this morning, bless his name, celebrate him, magnify him, glorify him, he's God all by himself. We thank you, Father. We love you, Father. We appreciate you, King of glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Is anybody thanking the Lord? Don't just listen at me. Thank the Lord. Open your mouth and give him your service and the fruit of your lips. Oh, 
Ramana Makusataba the Karabala Karabaka Sataba Ramana Katia Kusaba Takala Katia Branaktava Susip Lembro Kode Kesia the Bala Karabakas Le Gadia Kota Palakarabakote Nectesia the Balaka Lebron no vodo soto vora do vodo do vora do vodo vora vodo dia ne de ke dia breme de vene de ke de be vene de balia da bala landa bara ba ke dia velo do bosso pa ba ba la la bra ba 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 dia do do dia do do da ba dia do do dia do do si de 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 le de de be le de de ba dia balada da 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 balada da da balada da balada da 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 somebody thank him in the spirit somebody thank him in your understanding. Lendo sabaraba mama mama mani kede kese de kede kesi ato kala kasata lambo kobo toso toko to parakata lendo kusata balakande vere nege dia balakati asa laba nakada balakasa prakata na da balakalagas give him praise and give him thanks. Lento Sabarabakadas. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped and given thanks. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped and we have given thanks. Most sovereign God, we thank you for the gathering of the saints this morning. There's no distance in the spirit, there's no barrier in the spirit. And so in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gathering of the saints. Thank you for gathering us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to celebrate your death and your resurrection. It's because you are life that we are life. It's because you've been raised that we are raised. It's because you, we are seated with you that we have dominion over the affairs of life. I thank you, Father, for this. In Jesus' precious name, God's people all over the world say a very big amen. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome to this encounter with the Lord and with His Christ. This is day number two of the teaching or the conference breakthrough. All right. And, um, okay, so because of the little stretch that we had yesterday, I decided that we would have um, today's edition just strictly on Mixelar and we'll have the conclusion on ground tomorrow our Sunday morning worship service and you don't want to miss it because it's going to be a service of the supernatural. It's going to be a service of the supernatural. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So I'll be leading us in some things before going to the word of God today. Praise God. Hallelujah. I trust I'm still loud and clear. Praise God. Okay, I just got feedback that I was um, off air. Okay, all right then. All right then. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I was giving the explanation, please, I'd like for you to pay rapt attention. One of the few things you must do in the short time we'll be spending this morning is um, i like for you to be sensitive and respectful in the presence of God. When I say respectful, I mean, um, don't say because it's online. So you are listening, you're multitasking, you're wasting your time. It would be better you go off air. And I mean that respectfully. You know, Jesus said that she has chosen the better part, sitting at my feet and hearing the word. Okay, so you can't be in a service like this. This is a service, all right? It's just that it's an online edition, uh, edition of the service. You can't be doing this and cleaning and mopping and all of that. Just give the word of God full cause and full attention. And after the service, you can go and do the things that you ought to do. Praise God. Praise God. All right, so... Uh, the reason why we're having this meeting is because, okay, I discovered I did, I think I was uh, a little bit above three hours teaching yesterday. Uh, it was supposed to be um, 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I felt okay. Let's um, do online today. Okay, and then we'll um, have the on ground service and the online service tomorrow. So bring out your Bibles and your notepads and hear what the Spirit of God will be saying to the church. Because listen, this is a very important teaching. Very important teaching because I have seen it change lives. I have seen it. I've seen it help me. Um, it's a secret that I'm glad I found on time. That I wasn't part of the bad wagon that criticized it without understanding it. You know, a lot of people criticize. Well, in fact, the reason why people criticize messages or teachings is because they don't understand. Okay. If you understand something, I'm not saying you should not be careful uh, uh, as to what you listen and take. You should be. I teach that a lot. I teach the people I pastor that even if I'm teaching something, you can't find the word of God. Don't take it. That's how to raise a strong church. There's a difference between a strong church and a crowded church. A crowded church can be a strong church, but a crowded church is not necessarily a strong church. Okay? So you must, as a strong believer, validate the things you hear no matter who is teaching it with due respect to the person teaching it if you find it in the word of god then you should believe it now what i'm teaching and what the lord has been teaching us i have never taught on giving and receiving in an easter meeting but god began to teach me that one of the greatest lessons on the death and the burial and resurrection of jesus christ is the law of sowing and reaping that the father sowed his son as a seed to reap us as a family I repeat, the father sold his son as a seed to reap us as a family. He was first the only begotten. When he was sown as a seed, he became the first begotten. First meaning there are other, permit me to say, other begottens, praise God. That's not correct English, but just permit me to use that in context. Okay, so Jesus dying is a seed. Jesus being raised is the harvest. But not just the harvest of one seed. Praise God. God was speaking to Abraham and he said, not as not to a seed as of one, but to the seed as of many. So there's a harvest to the seed that God sowed. Okay? So if you look at it very well, we see that every seed the Lord will give a body. Jesus said, except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. So, the size of the harvest outweighs the quantity of the seed. That's why when you are sowing seeds, you must be careful because every seed, no matter the quality and the quantity, yesterday the Lord taught us about giving according to your level and your capacity. Whatever capacity you give at, it will be replicated and multiplied. The seed is never the same size with the harvest. That's why sowing is very important. So, we get from this teaching the law of sowing and reaping. That's why we're teaching along these lines. I felt I needed to make that clear so that people will understand why teaching of sowing and um, sowing and reaping, giving and receiving in such a time as this. Having said that, let's go to our text. Second Corinthians chapter nine. Quickly, Second Corinthians, it's in chapter number nine. Second Corinthians, it's in chapter number nine. Let's read it again. Second Corinthians nine and verse six. Let's begin from verse six. Second Corinthians nine six. I guarantee you this will change your life. Why I speak with passion on this subject is because I want to see God's people free. Listen, listen to me. Every kingdom has a system. You should know by now that you have dual citizenship. You are in this world, but not of this world. You are like an ambassador here. But an ambassador does not operate the system, quote and unquote, of the nation he's at. He operates with the system of the kingdom he's from, and he operates, you know, and lives according to those to that system. That's where his feeding is from. That's where his, uh, uh, that's his source. That's where everything is from. And the same applies to you and I. We are in this world, but not of this world. There's a kingdom system we're from. And in our system, the way we increase is by giving. Now listen to this. I'm a balanced, by the grace of God, a balanced believer and a teacher of God's word. I am not saying it is giving a loan that will prosper you. I have taught on savings, no matter how little. I have taught on investments. I have taught on having budgets, living below your means. That all those things you know they stand but haven't done all all right there's a principal thing that brings for the increase of the believer it is the first software before you do every other thing 
and that is the software and the principle of giving okay if you are a manager you are an investor in the kingdom and you are not a sower you will have results but it will be limited everything begins first with the law of sowing i don't want to use the word giving sowing and reaping So in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. So we establish, I just go do a brief recap, we establish the fact that the quality of the seed determines the quality of the harvest. This is not Tony. You know, I told you something. If you hear a teaching and you can't find it, plain language in the Bible, don't take it. What I am reading right now is in your Bible. And I'm not editing it. All right? So let's establish the fact that this is the authority of Scripture. I said yesterday that I can't have an argument with somebody who doesn't believe in the Constitution I believe in. We go to court to argue a case, not me, but people go to court to argue a case based on the Constitution. And anybody who does or acts constitutionally wins the case. In the same vein, in the kingdom, we argue things and we live things and we believe things and operate things based on the constitution. The word of God is our constitution in the kingdom. So what you are seeing is in the constitution of Second Corinthians chapter 9 or section 9, subsection 6, pardon me to use that legal term. So let's establish the fact that what this man is teaching is in the Bible. Because this is where it begins from. You don't argue with something that is real. So Paul writing, he said, but this I say to you, he which sweat sparingly. If it were a pastor who came up with this teaching that, ah, it is what you sow, you will reap. And if it wasn't found in the Bible, people can stone him to death. That is after their money. But this is the Holy Ghost, who is the order of scripture speaking. That the level of your harvest is determined by the level of your giving. Accept it. The level at which now you're receiving life today is, a di is directly proportional to your giving life. But this I say to you that he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Verse 7 Every man, according to how he has proposed himself, so let him give. Okay? So we said, we established this yesterday, and the word of God says that the harvest you want should inform your decision on what to sow. That's why in verse 6 it talks about how people get their harvest that if you sow big you get big you sow small you said small then verse seven everybody should decide what they give that means what you want to get should inform your decision on what you should give this is bible this is not pastor craft this is scripture as a christian the word of god should be final authority in your life so there's such a thing as giving in levels or a level of giving that provokes a level of harvest. That is very important. Now, let's go further to verse 8. That was just a recap of yesterday. Let's go to verse 8. Trust you are taking notes. And God, you know what? I'm going to read from verse 6 again down to 8. But this I say to you, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man, according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudging, no necessity. I've told you that nobody should fall. The day you are forced to give, there's no harvest. And we must say the truth. Many people are coerced to give. Prophet lied on to give. That is not how giving works in this kingdom. You will give it without seeing results. You don't give because you see people giving. Or you don't give at the level you see people giving. That's why in our ministry, you can tell if you're there. We don't call people out and say, those giving 1 million stand here. Those giving 200 stand here. Those giving 10 million stand here. The reason you do that, we don't do that, because some people begin to give in the flesh. So they don't want to be seen amongst the people giving 50K, so they come out for 1 million. And some of them stop coming to church and they run away because they don't have the 1 million. So we must be careful we are not giving according to the flesh. If you look at this text well, um, that's verse, uh, verse number 7. Be part, not grudgingly of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. You can sum that up to not giving in the flesh. Not giving in the flesh. Which means there's a need. The Lord is instructing you to sow. Instructing your family to sow. Instructing your business to sow. Instructing you to sow as a ministry. If you're a minister, understand my voice. He will 
lead you and tell you what to you say. You will know in your heart in proportion to the harvest that you want. You know, um, there was a time we were in a venue called Edify City. If you guys can remember, there was a time we even raised offering to pay for a service immediately after the service. We had, I had sown a seed that uh, paid for two or three months. It was in hundreds of thousands. Personally, as a family, we did that. We, we were not exhausted as a family. And the church didn't get to pay the rent. So if you remember, there was a service week where some people sold 2,000, 1,000, 3,000 to pay for that rent. You know, and we needed to get a space where we'd have 24 hours access like where we used today. It was from that place we came to this place. Okay, I'm giving this explanation for those who are not uh, members of the church on ground to understand what I'm saying. And then we needed to go. There was nothing in church account because we were using everything up to pay for his church space. I said, God, we can't continue like this. So you know what I did? I cleared what we had in the church account, everything we had. All right, I think it was 20 something thousand. Naira. That was all we had. Now, it was that bountiful. That was bountiful for us at that level. It was a huge seed. In fact, it was a, it, it, it was termed as foolishness in the natural okay so we took it and i went to my spiritual father and you know it, we didn't transfer it was cash so i put something to me put it in the church envelope i have never said this part to the church before so we used to have this and we still do the branded church envelopes then it was it was wine press okay so we i put it there he said, sow it in the church of to your pastor. So I went there, knelt down before him. My wife was pregnant then, if I remember. And I put the seed in his hands. All right. After he finished preaching, he said, now put your hand on the seed. And he put his hand on my hand and that on my wife's hand. We touched it together. And I prayed. And he prayed. I told him, it's a seed of the church. This is not my seed now. That's why I put it in the church envelope. We are trusting God for a place. I think it was in two weeks. We found ourselves in this new place. Two weeks. Two weeks. To which when we came, oh, I have testimonies upon testimony. This is the conference, so let me feel free because somebody's liberty is here. When we came to that space, this new space, there was nothing at all. If you remember our toilets, the toilets, in fact, there were no toilets. I don't consider that was just a toilet space, it wasn't a toilet. No bathrooms. The painting of the hall was horrible. It was like I had to ask myself, who used this place? And how can somebody use this kind of paint? It was terrible. That's in my opinion. There was no generation generator. I had to preach with my voice. I had a migraine for the first time in my life in ministry. I taught with a migraine that lasted for 48 hours. So after the service, I said to God's people, well, I have moved my faith and sowed my seed. We have come here. After this service, I'm expecting all of you to meet and find out how we're going to sow and get a generator. After the service, I say this respectfully with love in my heart. All right. Because I've grown over the years and I've learned how to do ministry. After that meeting, nobody held any meeting. After everybody went home and left it for me. Ah, I said, praise God. Nobody said anything about the generator. Okay? But notice I've sown a seed. You see, your seed has got ripple, ripple. It will come with ripple harvest. Hear me? When you sow for something and you get a breakthrough, you know one of the mistakes we make is that, okay, for instance, we sowed a seed to my pastor and we got a place. I should think that that seed has produced, right? Uh, do you know that the seed has not finished producing? Who is getting what I'm saying? You sow for something, and let's say you sow for a house, and you get a house. You think that the seed has finished. The seed is still producing. Let me give you an instance. When you plant a mango seed, and it brings a mango tree, share your first fruit. Is the first fruit from the mango tree the final fruit? Or do you keep coming back to harvesting seasons? Or who is hearing what I'm saying? God. Who is hearing what I'm saying? Now, this is blessing me myself. Let me go there again. When you plant a tree, and you get your first fruits of the tree. Do you go back in the season of production for another set of fruits, or do you abandon the tree because the tree has produced once? This is for somebody under the sound of my voice. Your seed planted well that grows into a mighty tree will keep bringing harvest. That is why you should keep sowing so that you have a forest of trees producing different things in your life. Did somebody get that? Did you hear what I just said? That's why you need to keep sowing because it's like growing trees and you will keep having supplies. So back to what I was saying. I told the seed, I thought that all that seed produced was the space. And trust me, at that level of ministry, hey, it was breakthrough. No paint, no toilet, no generator, no way to turn equipment on. But I was glad. I didn't know that the seed was still producing as a tree. So you know what I did? 
I went somewhere for a conference. When I went to the conference, I sat down and we were talking. I was talking to the fellow minister. And he knew about the movement. Next thing he just said is, I started looking at me strangely. I was wondering why. I was thinking maybe there was something wrong with my hair or something. He said, sorry, sir, I hope you don't find this offensive. But as we were sitting, the Lord told me to buy a generator for your church. This thing, this is documented. The generator is still in church. It's a yellow gen, all right, with a black frame. Uh, I've been hearing these testimonies before, but I, I, uh, I hadn't experienced it. I didn't know my seed was still working. Now, the seed is not just going to produce a church space, but it's going to produce the equipment to have church. Oh, God, feel this so strong. This one. Are you hear what I'm saying? Your seed is powerful. You see, I'm, I'm bringing you first to have faith in seed sowing again. Not just to sow, but let come to the point where you know that this is your escape route from the limitations of the economy for your breakthrough. He said, sir, will you give us the permission to sow again? I don't know why. I said, that is spot on because we need a gen as we speak. I never knew God could speak in details to people like that on what to sow in your life. I came home, I told my wife it was like a miracle. Do you know the next week a generator was in church? You know why? He's the head of the church. He's the savior of the body. If you plant your seed, your seed will produce a harvest. So we had the generator. It's still in church today as the backup generator. Then God blessed us as a church and we got uh, the main generator that we use today. So I'm just letting you know that the power of a seed, it doesn't just produce once. See, there are things you sowed in your part one in school that you will keep reaping until you have your fourth child. I don't know if that's prophetic for four kids here, but you know. You hear what I'm saying? Seeds you sowed years before that you still reap from. That's the power of a seed. That's why you can't be a seedless Christian that is not a giving Christian. You are cheating yourself. I just give you an example now how seed produced a church space all right and i didn't know i was going to say this but uh, well, since i'm teaching along the lines we are trusting god for another church space now we're there and it's going to require a lot of millions uh, uh, by the indices of real estate right now the lord has instructed me to sow a seed again and you are going to hear of the harvest you're going to hear of the harvest i wasn't going to say this to anyone we're just going to instruct the church i'm going to sow a seed but since I'm teaching along the lines, I'm letting you know. The, why am I giving you these testimonies? Letting you know that I am not deceiving you. It is working for me. It has worked for me. And it will keep working for me. Why? As long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest will not cease. I apologize to the church for not teaching this hard enough because of sentiment or what people would think I want by teaching it. Maybe if I taught it hard enough, not just once in a while, had enough many people would have broken through much more than this oh, of course not everybody will obey because financial matters are very sensitive matters but for those who will obey they would have shifted now i have taught it but not as hard as this and the people who listen to the teachings have shifted levels so i bring you your breakthrough secret and it's the law of sowing now let's go back to uh, that was just uh, a testimony to give you you know to release your faith in this subject matter that this man is not teaching what he doesn't know he wasn't teaching what he doesn't know I, a friend of mine called me and he said uh he said you're you're at our level of ministry because there are levels he said your dimension of um, ministry funding <laughs> okay i was speaking to him i was talking about you know ah now we may need just to get the place to 10 million to get it then not to fix it <laughs> He said, please, I should be calling these things much more than uh, uh, that this million million I'm calling, that uh, God is helping me in ministry, that this is, I'm saying, that even one million is, is a huge, you know, the way he was saying it then, I, I now recall, I said, truly, truly and truly, there's a realm you get to. You may not have the money in your bank account, but by the law of sowing and reaping, by the, by the place that God has brought you to, you're not afraid to call some amounts. And that's my next point giving those something to you much more than giving you money back and that's where i want to go to now okay every man verse seven according as he has purpose in that so let him give not gradually of necessity for love for the lord okay loves a cheerful giver verse number verse number what now verse nine eight i beg your pardon now watch this everybody listen to verse eight if you're just logging on please for those who are just logging on i see the numbers have increased here uh if you're not on the chat room please it's second corinthians chapter nine verse eight now second corinthians chapter nine verse eight See what it says. It says, and God, 
is able to make all grace abound towards you. Notice the subject is given. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always, the word is always, having all, again, sufficiency in all things, and may abound to every good work. So the first thing you need to know is that the first result of giving is not money. I wish I was teaching this on ground, but we we'll probably will go, we'll do a recap tomorrow. The first, the first, the first result of, this is where people miss it. Now I've told you and taught you from God's word that giving has to be done in a scriptural way. Number one, you give according to your capacity. You propose in your heart what you want to give. Number two, the, the size of your harvest determines the, should inform your decision on what to sow. These are scriptural patterns to give. You don't just give, all right? Now, this is another crucial point in principled and scriptural giving. What's the next point? The next point is that when you are giving, the result of your giving is not first money. Now write this down. The primary result of giving is grace. The secondary result of giving may be money. I take it again. The primary result of giving is grace. The secondary result of giving is money or maybe money. Now, why is this important? A lot of people give and they just expect money for this time. But what I've observed in my life as a practitioner of this truth by grace and from the study of my apostolic fathers and reading the Bible is that God gives the first result of seed sowing is grace released. And let me tell you the truth. Eh? It is far more important than cash. If people knew that there is, I'm not talking about the grace of salvation. There are different graces in the Bible. The Bible says the grace of salvation appears to all men. The Bible talks about here, God is able to make all grace. All grace means there are different types of graces. There's a grace for raising children. If you don't have it, you need to contact it. And it's not a function of money. It's grace. There's a grace for keeping a home as a man and as a woman. It's beyond beauty. It's a grace. There's a grace for starting a business. Not everybody is grace to do a business. Some people are grace to do a business. Some people are grace to partner with a business. There are different graces. There's a grace to pastor. There's a grace to shepherd. If you don't have the grace, it is the fastest way to die. Yes, you heard what I said. If you don't have the grace to be a pastor, if you don't have the grace to step into ministry, it is the quickest way to the grave. And many have died like that because there was no grace for it. You'll be wounded because you don't have the grace to overlook the hurts. Okay? If you don't have the grace of the prophetic ministry, you step into, you get into familiar spirits, into covenant with familiar spirits. So there's grace for everything. There's grace for everything. Okay? So I'm not talking about the grace of salvation. I'm talking about the grace for life and for living. When you sow, the first result of your seed is grace. And if you're a student of grace, and if you're a recipient of grace, you will come to observe that grace is more important than cash. Yes, you heard me well. I'll say that again. Grace is more important than cash. I tell people, I am not rich, not yet, but I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And blessing is a function of grace. When grace shows up, it gives you everything you need, even when you don't have the cash for it. So Paul said in verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound in the context of giving. Notice in verse 6, he's talking about how to give, um, how to determine your harvest. If you give small, you get small. If you give big, you get big. Then verse 7, it says, decide what you want to give. And then verse 8, it says, grace. God is able to make all grace abound in the context of giving. Every time you give, there's a grace released upon your life. This is why, if you ask me, if you ask me now, all right, just uh, if somebody walks up to me and says, Pastor Tony, why should I really give? This, this is a sincere question. Why, why should I give? I have money. I have estates. Why should I be giving? My business is flourishing. I will tell you the primary reason why you should give is grace. Because you will get to zones in your life where money can't help, but grace can help. You will get to zones in your life, junctions in your life, where all your money will not answer, but grace will answer. So has this answered the question of somebody who has money and doesn't see the reason to sow? You can have, speaking right now, you can have 10 million in your bank account. If you don't have grace, one problem can come and it will wipe your money in 24 hours. Grace is superior to cash. 
You know why a lot of people argue with this teaching? It's because they have they they look at the seed sowing principle as a trade by batter effect. Eh? I sow one thousand, so God will give me one million. He can, and he does in seasons like uh, he, he does in people's lives. But beyond that, the primary result and the best result of your giving is a grace-filled life. Oh my God! A life without grace is ugly. A life without grace is tasteless. A life without grace is a man is like a man quenching fire every day of his life. You are just using money to solve problems. Your money is depreciating. You are making it, but it's going. You lack grace. You lack grace. So note that the first result of giving is not cash. It's grace. I wish I can stress this enough. When you give, there's a grace released upon your life and upon the works of your hand. We know a lot of people in the body of Christ who feel they shouldn't give because they are millionaires. Now, this is your answer. It's not just receiving even if you receive because millionaires give and receive. It is the grace that it brings upon the works of your hand. It's the grace that it brings upon your business. It's the grace it brings upon your family life. Giving carries grace. Okay? It carries grace. So the main reason you should give is not to get money, even though money may come. It's grace released. You know, when... You know, you can have money and you're looking for a property to buy and the property does not come out. Have you been in that situation? You have money to do something and you're looking for the thing, you have not seen it. You have not seen it. Uh, uh, there's a testimony, but I will share it. I will share that. You are looking for things, but because of the grace upon your life. It is when you step out with the little force that you have that what you are looking for shows up. Everybody has been looking for it, but you find it. It's grace. Grace is sweeter than cash. Grace is the primary result of your giving. God is able to make all grace and bound to give us. Okay, now the next statement is all grace. All grace. This is huge because there are different graces in life. It tells me that a giver has all graces. Ah, let's read it again. So that it doesn't look like I'm quoting just off my heart. And God, but it is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have in all sufficiency in all things may abound to all good works. So this verse is loaded, but let's start with the first fact is that uh, giving releases grace. All right. If you're a giver, one of the things you observe is that your your grace for life will just be increasing. And you'll be entering things effortlessly. You'll be managing things effortlessly. Life will be working for you. It's like um, it's like um, okay. L- let me give this example. Right, I'm using this to give an example, not for any other thing. So I used to have um, a truck. I call it a truck. I used to use this um, um, a seven-seater car because I have a large family, you see, and um, a saloon or sedan car wouldn't work for us. We tried it before, but it didn't work for us. So and I like I like rugged vehicles. So I got this car using. I think I used it for about three years or so, well, three years, and I got monster truck tires. You know, I like things like that. Okay, so uh, people wondered why I was using the car, and uh, I've seen many things in this life. So, uh, no, no. It got to a point. Somebody called my car a bus. I've never said this on pulpit. Yeah, yeah. Somebody called the bus. Somebody said, ah, man, of God, this one, I room my parlor. But he never bothered me because it was my level. I don't answer people. I don't answer people's foolishness. They'll push you into rubbish. They'll push you into zones where you don't have grace for. You know, I kept using my thing. And I still love the truck till today. Praise God. So I noticed something. I did it, I, everything about that car was perfect to me. When I turned the steering, the truck, the tires, the monster truck to move and all of that. But during my birthday, I trusted God for a vehicle. I just needed a birthday gift at that level for myself, you know. So we released our faith. It looked like it was impossible, but it came. So uh, God blessed me with a more recent vehicle. One of the things I observed about that vehicle, I'm going somewhere with this, is that when I stepped into the car and I touched the steering, Hey, God have mercy. I asked myself, so this is what you have been driving as in the former car. Just a very soft touch. And I discovered, oh, this doesn't use a steering pump. It's electronic. It's so soft. It's so light that you have to be careful how you turn. I could use just my finger to do a 360 degree turn. I couldn't try that with that one. I have to use my muscle for that one. In quote, if you understand what I'm saying. Now, why am I giving this explanation? That is how grace is. 
as you give there's a soft touch to your life did you hear what i said when you give eh, the things that you used to struggle to turn to to get to like my former truck huh? when you step into the zone of giving it will it will be just a little effort with much results i hope you got that analogy an allegory all right that is how giving that's the grace giving brings when others struggle to enter you enter you have easy access easy access are you hearing what i'm saying so i use those that that picture to let you know that some people are living in that zone where it's work you know but they are struggling to enter it it takes more time more effort more results but there are some people doing it under grace and just a soft touch they're there and i prophesy to someone under the sound of my voice who has struggled to enter dimensions before now you see as you practice these principles it will be easier for you now from this point you will easily access it you will easily know it you see you see from this teaching for those who will obey this young prophet praise god you will buy the house with ease mm. You will start that business with ease. I'm talking about the grace that will be released by your giving. By your giving. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. It will happen. So grace makes things easier. That's why when somebody is doing something is graceful, people who don't understand grace will say, is it not just to preach? Is it not just to sing? I can do it now. Ah, is it not what is there? And when the person steps into the place, <laughs> the person steps into a wilderness because grace makes things easy. On the outside but it's not not it's not necessarily easy but grace makes it easy and that's what's going to come upon your life when you're a giver praise god i thought i taught this church enough to be wise enough nobody typed amen you missed something there praise god if the visitors didn't type amen i i, I was expecting some wise people will, those of you trusting god for a house i just said you will buy a house nobody said amen you missed something there in the words of uh, bill winston you missed that so if it comes again you get that praise god now let's go verse 8 you and god is able to make all grace abound to you that ye always having all sufficiency so the first thing that money does or giving does is not to produce money it's to produce grace and let me tell you something life without grace is a tasteless life life without grace is a funny life life is without grace is a, is a life i don't want i don't want to be outside the margin of god's mercy and grace is a second in my life all right good now the next point is all grace before we talk of all sufficiency so giving produces all grace so if somebody who is giving scripturally we observe that there's a grace to raise children there's a grace to take care of your wife there's a grace to take care of your husband there's a grace to relate with siblings there's a grace to relate with in-laws listen to this you can have money but your relationship with your in-laws is 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 like is like it's like two mafia groups fighting in Sicily. You are at peace, but whenever anyone comes to visit, you and your husband will get into a quarrel for six months. You see, you're having a beautiful family, but there's no grace to relate with with in-laws. There's a grace that comes upon your life, and God will make your enemies at peace with you. People who fight you just bow. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They just bow to the to the. They just leave the contention. There is grace for every aspect of life. There are graces I'm still pursuing myself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So there's what they call all grace, not just grace. A giver has access to all grace. God is able to make all grace. A scriptural giver will have the grace to raise a raise the family well, have the grace to fulfill his ministry and his calling in the local assembly, have, have the grace to to relate with him as well, the grace to increase financially, the grace to do whatever he needs to do in life. It's not automatically, he doesn't get there all at once, but he has access, he has access to that grace. God, in the context of giving, that's what scripture calls the giving grace, the grace that is a product of giving, the grace that empowers people to even give. So please, I, I, I'd like to restate one more time the primary result of your giving is not money is grace don't say pastor i've been giving i've not been seeing money uh -uh. you have been having grace you have been taking the grace for granted eh? you go to the labor world you push out your children without complication it's grace sir. 
is greater. Huh? There's a there's, there's, there's a woman, you know, got pregnant, had twin babies, and when they did their check, they called my pastor, and one was uh, he said they have to take out one because they gave her the choice. We do want to, you know, let me say take out, you know. Stop the life of one because one had the um, tendencies of Down syndrome and is going to be a problematic child. One was okay, but one was going to need care throughout his or her life. How do you decide with that? All right, you know what I'm saying. That I'm not. I'm not trying to be sensitive to people with that situation, but to let you know that to go to the labor ward and push out no matter than into grace. You don't take this for granted. Some of you have God called and judged God unfaithful because you gave you didn't see money. But you saw grace. You saw grace. You went, you got married. Grace did that one. But you are saying you saw the seed, you didn't get money. Who told you that the only result to your giving is money? No. No. It's grace. And if you transact with the grace, it will produce money. So stop ignoring the graces that giving has produced in your life. Giving produces grace. I want you to focus more on grace as a result of giving that money. I have to be truthful to you. Focus more on grace. If you maximize the grace, funds will flow. I'm not saying money doesn't come when you give. It does. I've received that. But what comes first is grace. The believer enjoys grace out of giving. I can pinpoint to people, if I sit with you for one hour and you tell me your frustrations and the fact that you have sown and you have not received money, if I listen to you well enough, I can show you the areas of graces in your life that God has released via your seeds. Yeah. You go to the labor world, you have children. You are living with your spouse. You think it's a small thing. Huh? Or you think the reason why you are with your wife, man of God, is because you are a pastor. Do you know how many women woke up in the morning, left their pastors and went to England? Do you know how many pastors have got broken homes? And it's not working anymore. The church is working, but the home has scattered. It's not because you're a pastor, you're a ministry that's working. It's the grace of God. It's the grace of Jesus. That, now, whether you're a ministry or not, the reason you are living with your spouse in this time, you guys have held it together for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, 20, 25, 30 years, is the grace of God, not because it was all rosy. It's grace. And God is able to make all grace abound to you. A giver will enjoy, will have access, at least access to all graces. But many people despise the grace of God upon their life. Despise the grace that has come out of giving because they feel that giving should just produce money immediately. Any pastor who tells you that you should just focus on money when you give has not taught you the total counsel of God's word. Because from scripture here, the first result of giving is grace. Now, is there money in giving? Yes. See it here. See it here. He said, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you having always, or that you always having all sufficiency. That can come now into the realm of finance, sufficient. So notice it is all grace first, before all sufficiency. All sufficient has to do with resources. So you see now in the Bible that grace precedes money in the principle of sowing. Why do we rush for money first? Yes, you'll be suffi sufficient. All sufficient means all sufficiency. I beg your pardon, means all sufficiency. Which means sufficient means to have enough. So grace will give him, will produce enough funds eventually. Oh, yes. Yes. You can't. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Don't deceive yourself. Tell yourself the truth. The Bible says let every man examine himself. You can't be a sower. And you have other aspects of your finances correct. You live your, low your means, you manage well, you invest well, and all of that. You can't be a sower and look for it. It's not possible. Listen, I'm not being insensitive in case you are there. Just take the word of God and walk this truth. You can't be a giver and have your finances in proper shape by investing and management and all of that and look for how to pay your bills. It's not possible. Something's wrong somewhere. I repeat, it's not possible. I know what I'm saying. God will make all grace and all sufficiency come towards you. You will be sufficient. What that means, you will have enough to pay the tuition. You will have enough to pay to pay the rent. You will have enough to pay bills. You will have enough. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Huh? By my bills and responsibility. I'm, I'm giving testimonies because I'm teaching along these lines. I'm not bragging. Okay? 
by my bills and testimony. Which salary is paying my bills? I live off my giving, not salary. So what that does, it makes it sufficient for me to pay bills. Can you see that now? The reason why a lot of people are amazed at my YouTube level is like, how are you paying school fees? Doing this, doing that. It's called sufficiency. Shit. What produces sufficiency? The giving grace. After Paul talked about sowing and reaping, he came to the point, he says now, this is the result. Verse 8 is the result of giving bountifully. He says that God is able to make all grace one. So giving produces grace. Then it will produce resources. So please write it down. Giving produces grace before it produces resources. What is the grace? All grace. What are the resources? All sufficiency. You are sufficient in your bills. You can pay your bills. You can, you can pay your children's tuition. You can't say, I've been sowing and I can't pay my children's tuition. I've been sowing and we can't eat. You are not sowing. You are not sowing correctly. And I'm not talking about people. Now, listen, I'm not an insensitive pastor. I know what I'm saying. I know some people are in some tight zones financially. And that's why the word of God is coming. Sometimes it can come hard to correct you. Take the correction. The only reason why you'll be giving correctly and you don't have all sufficiency is because, one, you're living above your, your means. Two, you don't have financial management. You don't have financial management. Yesterday, there was something needed. They came to me. I looked at the thing and I thought, very well. I discovered that we could do without it. We have a substitute for it. I said, you go for the substitute and keep your money. <laughs> That's wisdom. So that what would have been used for that thing that wasn't necessary would be used for something that is necessary. That's how to live life. But some people don't do that. And they give you give and you just take what you have and next thing you're going around shopping sprees like somebody that's under a plate to impress people. This is a huge subject. The reason why people are giving are not stepping into all sufficiency. You know what all sufficiency means? It means being sufficient. They are not sufficient. They don't have enough to pay their bills and to live their life. When the Bible says God has given us all things that pertains to life and to godliness. Why is it that they are not sufficient? If you check very well, there's foolishness in the system. Foolishness in their practices financially. So it is because of this I'm making this bold statement. You can't be a correct giver and not have sufficiency. It is not true. I'm speaking as a man who has tasted the faithfulness of God. The only reason you step out of you step out from the zone of sufficient to insufficiency is when you live above your means. For instance, I've told you people before, there are places I can't live now. Where I'm living now, I couldn't live here five years ago. If I tried, there'll be there'll be the ministry will crumble. So there are levels. All right? You give me a house and you say the house rent is 10 million per annum. You won't find me there. The moment you say 10, I'm out. Oh, pastor, you're faithless. That's not faith. That's foolishness. Because 10 million can get you a land somewhere. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you find your place where you, your, yourself in the place where there's no sufficiency as a giver, check your structure. The word of God cannot lie. You can't be a giver and lack grace. You can't be a giver and not have your needs met. I'm talking at your level. If you now want to do rolling with the big boys, and uh, I think they say something like the ballers, uh, um, um, or whatever it is you say. I, 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 I think they, they are referring to people who have cash. Uh, the big boys league. That is when you will find yourself in serious insufficiency. If you give me a jet now for ministry, you want to kill me. There's no way I'm going to be in sufficiency with that. I'm going to be owing banks in two months if I do that. What am I doing with a jet? What are you doing with things you can't afford and you can't maintain? I've been teaching this financial wisdom, one of the graces of God upon my life, to people that listen to me. If you're a child of God doing what you should do, if you are lacking somewhere, there's a wisdom problem. You know why? You know why I'm shouting? Like, because God is faithful. My bragging is on the faithfulness of God. That's all. That if you are doing it well, God is faithful. If you are insufficient, there's a wisdom problem. So you can't give and not have grace. You can't give and not have, not some sufficiency, all. You see that word there? All sufficiency. All sufficiency means all sufficiency. That you are sufficient everywhere. Not that uh, 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 um, there, there's, there's a, there, you can't pay light bills. You can't pay this bill. You can't pay that bill. A giver who has financial structure, who doesn't live above his means. I'm, I'm emphasizing that one. Who doesn't spend like somebody on drugs? 
who lives according to his sight will never lack in any aspect. The least that will happen is that he will be on that level, and from that level, he will keep growing to higher levels. You know why you can't grow? There's too much weight. Nobody climbs a mountain with load. You climb light. Have you seen mountain climbers? So how can you scale height financially? Shouting that I'm a giver, I'm not seeing anything. When you carry too much weight, you can't climb. You can't climb. Do you know that Saul, David would have died when Saul's armor? Because it was too heavy. Have you observed the armor Saul used, David used for his age? Was, was something that was light. Please get that realm and let it change your life. Saul's armor for him was heavy. Saul's armor for Saul wasn't heavy. David's armor, the armor he used was light. So you can't come into all, this is the wisdom aspect of this thing. you can't come into all sufficiency. Because I'm speaking with the passion because I want to see God's people's needs met. I want to see people prosper at their level. There are levels to these things. Dr. David Wilbur says, life is in levels. Faces are being a part of them. Men are in sizes. That will change my life. Anytime I want to do something, I ask myself, is this my size? There are two sizes I work with when I want to do things. One, my size or the size of my faith. If it's not my size and not the size of my faith, I back out. It's not my season. It must be your size financially or the size of your faith. If you can't take it, can your faith take it? So giving will produce sufficiency. It's a must. If you are not sufficient as a giver, now, if you are not into all sufficiency, the first thing to do is check your giving life. Are you giving? If it's not sufficient, child of God, see, see, when I hear the word of God, I ask myself, Tony, where are you missing? Don't be proud, though. And don't get angry at me. Don't say this man is uh, speaking, he's being insensitive. No, no, no. I'm being real with the word of God. I do that to myself, too. Let every man examine himself. If you are seated here, and I'm not talking about um, going to Echo to spend one weekend and going to the Maldives. I'm talking at your level, that your, all your needs are met. Because God is faithful to that. If you are not having sufficiency now, what you need to do is first check, am I a giver? Because it's not salary that produces all sufficiency. It is giving that produces all sufficiency. I'll say that one more time. It's not salary that produces all sufficiency. It is giving. One of, one of my daughters came to me one time. She said that she, did, she doesn't know when last she spent her salary. And please, let me give a disclaimer. That she is not, she's not a whore. She's not a loose girl. She's a very sound believer. Sound believer, spirit, soul, and body. Is that okay? All right. But she told me she doesn't touch her salary. She hasn't touched her salary for months. How does she do it? Giving produces. God will cause people to remember you. Things will spring up. Businesses you didn't plan. Someone will just ask you, hey, please, I'm looking for so, so, and so. And as a smart person, you go and supply it. Your salary comes, you keep your salary as savings. And you get what I'm saying? God is providing and meeting the needs. So sufficiency is not a function of salary. Sufficiency is a function of giving. So if I'm not having sufficient, what I should sit down, sufficiency, what I should sit down to do is first of all asking, ask myself, how is my giving life? Am I giving enough? Am I giving at my level? Or am I giving correctly? Now, if the answer is no, that's where you need to go. Fix your giving life. Sort your giving life out. Okay? Fix your giving life. Then if you discover that your giving life is intact and correct, check your wisdom life. You're probably living where you shouldn't be living, driving what you shouldn't be driving, eating what you shouldn't be eating. Oh! I've seen that work for a lot of people. I've helped people with their budgets and they are broken through. And you see that you now, in the next six months, you have left that level. So the emphasis of the spirit this morning, that's why I'm just paused on this, is that sufficiency part. Grace produces money first. So I beg your pardon. Produces grace first before it produces resources and the resources can mean money. So all grace is all grace and then all sufficiency means resources. So you're sufficient. You don't lack any good thing. So lacking is not supposed to be, believers are not supposed to lack hope. Yes, they are not, you are not supposed to lack. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are not supposed to lack. If you are lacking, call for an emergency meeting with yourself, yourself and yourself alone. Sit down with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and ask Him, show me where I'm missing it. There are times maybe He knocked on the door, door of your heart and He says, now sow a seed. He's saying sow a seed because you know, somebody said, well, so God can bless me without a seed. You don't understand. In the principle of the earth, is as long as the earth remains, seed and harvest will not cease. So if a harvest is coming, he tells you you need to sow a seed. Why? Because you're on the earth. If you're in heaven, he doesn't need seed to get to you. But on the earth, there's seed, seed, uh, seed time and harvest principle. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he tells you two months to time, two years to time, a need is coming and he ministers to you to sow, but you didn't sow. Some of you are in lack today because you disobeyed the voice to sow in a season before now. And Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped in that same year, not the same day. Which means God inspired him to sow and before the year ended, harvest came. So before a harvest will come, before a need will come, God can move your spirit to sow, to sow to someone, to sow to a family, to sow to a minister, to sow to a servant of God. He will minister to you to sow because he ministers seed to the sower. But people disobey that prompting to sow. And when the need shows up, they say God is not faithful. No, he's a faithful God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The believer is not supposed to lack. There's the breakthrough power of the seed. Your seed can break the limit of this economy over your own life, not over the nation, no. your own life. Seed principle can bring breakthroughs in the time of breakdowns. But are you sowing? Are you sowing? Are you sowing as led by the Spirit of God? A believer is a sower. Cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. Stop listening to ignoramuses on social media. They don't understand the law. Let's bring this to a close. So there are many graces. Sufficiency. You need to be sufficient. If you are going to be sufficient, you have to be a giver. If a believer stays and you are lacking in any area, let me tell you. I'll give you this testimony as I close. Um, I was living at Lambo Street at Lackberry many years ago. I think it should be six or seven years ago now. Okay. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, don't say he's talking. He's talking. You know, let me, let me, let me. Uh, I won't say that. Let me just stick to what I'm saying. You know, people just sit down and they think, ah, why would pastors talk like this? Everybody is giving to them. I tell you that the ratio of people that give to a church to give to a pastor in a church, they are not up to two percent of the entire church. Take my word to the bank. Take my word to the bank. It is not what people give them in church. If a pastor is having his needs met, I'm not wealthy, I'm not rich. Now, for now, I'm blessed. That's the level of am. Once I have a need, God supplies. But I'm telling you the gospel truth. It's not what people give to them. No. No. Now, I was in Lambo. We couldn't feed. God told me to go into ministry food. We couldn't feed. Okay? We were experts at buying okra soup now if you knew, i i hate that soup with a passion because the soup reminds me of sufferings you suffer to eat it you you roll your hands to eat it and i said i can't be eating and gymming at the same time when i want to gym i gym when i want to feed i feed you know it satisfies my mouth with good things so that i'm expend, expending energy when i'm eating across soup because you have to roll it but you got to a point my wife told me that's the cheapest soup so we we'll buy okra 300 naira. We couldn't afford meat, so we literally just buys one strand of pomo. Then that's where she cuts it. Do you know that? <laughs> Do you know that people in church didn't know? We look like we're okay. It was so much. Then I think then we had ruel. I don't know. My wife will have the details. I don't know if she was pregnant with Penny then and all of that. I, I, I'm sure it was ruel that yeah, it was ruel that we had them. Then we had to buy baby milk, and then the price skyrocketed. It got so serious. I didn't call any member. I wasn't angry at them. I didn't come to church to say, God punish all of you, you're not giving to me. No. You know what I did? I sat in that my sitting room. In that sitting room, if I sit down on the floor and stretch, in the words of my mother, I would touch the wall. It was so small that if you stay in my, my pallor and lie down sideways, you won't be able to stretch your body. It was it was in fact somebody came, I've heard all kinds of things. Somebody came and said, you know, this is a hostel. There's nothing I didn't hear in my life. Nothing I've not heard. Okay? It was so serious. You know what I did? I sat down with the Lord in that sitting room was very small. I said something is wrong. And you see, instead of being prideful, why don't you just agree that something is wrong? Lord, where am I missing it? Lord, where am I missing it? And guess what? He showed me. He showed me from scripture where I was missing it. I adjusted. My levels increased. Phew! We were able to buy our first car as a couple. That was a Nissan Murano. Pew! We started going up for higher. Then he got to another level. He became tight again. I asked God again. And he gave me. Every time I've had insufficiency, I have asked God and searched what the problem is. You know why? You know why I asked, went, went to God? Because I knew something was wrong. 
You can't be insufficient as a Christian and think it's normal. It's not right. You know why? You're a king's kid. Let's stop practicing religion. If your father owns the world, why are you looking for food to eat? Are you getting what I'm saying? You should get angry and know something is wrong. You can't be struggling to get a job. No. No. You know what I mean by struggling to get a job? One of my sons, I told him recently, I said, you will, they were laying off people from where he was working. So just wake up and sack people, sack, call you and say, you're gone, you're gone. For no reason. I said, there's no need to fear. Before they attempt it, you will bounce into another job. Okay? It was a little rough, but as I speak to you, the day it happened was the, the next day he resumed the new job. And I'm sure it's online listening to me now. You see, you are a king's kid. You don't know who you are. If it's not coming, find out what the problem is. It may be that your direction is wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm speaking from passion because I want you blessed. So I asked the Lord and he showed me where the problem was. And we jumped and skid levels. What is wrong, Lord? This shouldn't be. Am I disobeying you somewhere? Is there a seed I'm to be sowing? Am I spending incorrectly? Praise God. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop it here for today. And um, we'll continue along these lines, you know, tomorrow. Or along the lines of the Spirit. Because tomorrow is going to be a supernatural time. I trust God for His leadings. I, I hope you were able to get something. Um, if we were taking notes, I'm sure you got the point. So that scripture is very pregnant. Money produces, giving produces grace first before money. Money falls under sufficiency. So some of you who are angry with God, I ask that God will heal your hearts. It may be that grace came when you sowed the seed, but you despised grace. You said, what is this amongst many? Mana. You know, Jesus had a need to feed 5,000. Philip and the other disciples thought he was crazy. But he knew grace will come upon the seed. He lifted it up. What did he have? Was it all sufficiency? It was all sufficiency. And they had remnants. So grace produces, giving produces grace. Grace and also giving produces sufficiency. All sufficiency after grace has come. So I want you to get the proper order of kingdom prosperity. The first thing you will see is grace. So, before I close, which grace have you noticed in your life that you have in recent times? Grace to do business? Grace to sell products? Grace to know where there's opportunity? Which grace are you despising? And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ that your eyes will be open to the grace of God and you will step into all sufficiency. Today, I declare Every spirit of lack and shortage under the sound of my voice, I speak from this office as one whom God has helped and is helping. Every iota of insufficiency is drowned today. I declare that your seed will begin to speak. You will begin to break through by seed power. For everyone whom the Lord is laying on his or her heart a seed to sow to wherever he's leading you to sow. That it will be clear. You are not, you're not sowing emotionally. You will sow in the name of Jesus. Spirit led giving. And it will break the gates of brass. Financial brass. And you will begin to enjoy grace. And you will step into the zone of all sufficiency. I speak all sufficiency to everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak all sufficiency on the job. All sufficiency in business. You will never lack on this resurrection weekend. Because Jesus as a seed was sown and he rose with many fruits i declare your giving life will begin to produce harvest any place you have been given wrong as the word of god has shed light i ask for grace for adjustment in the name of jesus i declare that from today now listen to this somebody on the sound of my voice this is the last day you will lack this is the last day you will lack 
if if it's a wisdom problem wisdom has come you will never lack you will never i'm prophesying to families right now i sense that anointing nobody under the sound of my voice will look for school fees nobody on the sound of my voice will look for house rent to pay nobody will gather friends to look for what to eat you won't gather friends to help you with your family in the name of jesus no king's king begs and i declare begging over your life is terminated i usher you by the breakthrough power of the seed into your season of all sufficiency i prophesy you into your season of all sufficiency from today you will look back at the days you lack and you will never see those days anymore in the name of jesus go forward and prosper go forward and make it go forward and get away from the circle of death i rebuke spirit of death d-e-b-t i declare in the name of jesus everyone own today the power of god comes upon you and your debt is paid your debt is paid in the name of jesus if you are owing in business whether investors whether banks today i declare the power and the wisdom of god will come upon you and you will be able to clear those debts in the name of jesus i prophesy what city welcome to all sufficiency welcome to all sufficiency as the day gets darker in the economies of the world for this church for everyone planted under this grace you will know all sufficiency i didn't say you will have sufficient it will be all sufficient it will be sufficient in all areas in the name of jesus there will be funds to even be a blessing to your parents to start the business to start the foundation of the building to buy the building to do what god has placed in your heart all sufficiency in the name of jesus i release the grace of god and i release the sufficiency of god i release the grace of god i release the sufficiency of god in the name of god the father in the name of god the son in the name of god the holy spirit thank you father for having heard us we pray in the name that guarantees an answer jesus the christ god's people said amen it's done in jesus name now listen to this i want to encourage you okay the devil plays a trick by telling people they want your money. That's why they're teaching and giving. Maybe some do, but I don't. I want to encourage you. If you stopped giving, start giving again. From this revelation, go to Second Corinthians chapter 9 and study for yourself. I have taught it, but go. Say, Holy Spirit, show me what pastor is saying. And read from yourself. Read with different translations. Amplified NLT. Read. Let it break it down. And see if what I said is not in the Bible. And if it's in the Bible, ask God for the grace to begin to give. Nobody in this church, under the sound of my voice, should be a taker alone. Because it is more blessed to give than to receive. Which means only givers really increase. I don't want you to decrease. I declare in the name of Jesus the grace to begin to give. That's where the breakthrough is. You will begin to give. You will begin to know how to give. And listen, whenever the Lord speaks to you, whenever the Lord speaks to you to give, you will hear his voice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will hear his voice. And can I say, can I start by, end by saying, listen to this. I told you yesterday on consistency. The secret is inconsistent. Why am I giving this point as a teacher? I just, just want to teach you happy and go. I want to give you tools to succeed. That's why it looks like sometimes pastor takes time to teach. I'm not just there. You think I, you don't think I get tired in my body? I just want results. That's all. I want results. I told you of the testimony of my son. Who they were, people, they were sacking people. I said, as you, before you get sacked, another job will come. I said the day they told him to leave, the next day he was in the office in the new place. Don't you think that gives me joy? That's why we teach. That's why I spend time. Now listen to this. Consistency is the rule of the game. Number two, don't start giving today and in two months you want to be in Banana Island. That's not how it works. For if the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And lastly, do you know why you should give? Some of you will give now. Eh? In five years' time, you will be seeing breakthrough now. But in five years' time, you will enter into a major harvest. You will be afraid to testify. And you will wonder what you did. You will not, some of you will never remember until you get to heaven. And it was a seed you sowed now. Start sowing. You are far behind Shelly. The Bible says, give a portion to six, give a portion to seven. Sow in the morning, sow in the evening. For you don't know which one will germinate. That's how believers should be behaving. Be behaving. So keep so as led by the Spirit of God, don't give emotionally. I've taught that balance. So, when the Holy Spirit puts it in your hand to give in this particular dimension, do that. I think the lady is here. The Lord told her to start giving to her elder brother. I'm sure she should. The other brother is a pastor. Okay? That she starts supporting. She told me about it. I said immediately, what are you waiting for? You don't know what those seeds will do. 
God can send somebody tomorrow to start just taking of your children's tuition. I wish God would open your eyes to what I know about giving. Your giving is not just for today. Your giving is for tomorrow. Somebody just wakes up and takes care of a bill. I will pay. I will do this. All right? Somebody walks up to you, your child is in SS2, and says, would you want your, your, your son to school in Oxford? The Lord is leading me to do that. And you don't know it's a seed you sowed in 2023. Start sowing as fast as you can. It's your secret to breakthrough, and you don't have to announce your seed. That's the, that's the cap to it. Don't announce it. Don't announce it. Start giving anonymously. Except, of course, if you are giving to an anointed person, you have to. Please, I suggest that you make yourself known. Yes, for the blessings. It's very important. But when you give, don't go and be broadcasting it. But when the harvest come, let them be speculating where it came from. I want all of you to prosper, and you are going to prosper. In this assembly, I have declared by faith, by the faith of the Son of God, you will be multi, the least will be multi-millionaires. Yes, both men and women. Husband and wives will be struggling on, on how to buy birthday gifts that we are showing and shine each other. Not just that husbands will be buying wives' cars. Wives will get to the point that they give cars to their husbands. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Children are very blessed, sound and healthy, all around prosperity. It is possible. And until you enter it, I won't rest. And that's why God sent me with this teaching in this break two weekend. Welcome to all sufficiency. Never forget that word. Welcome. If I were you, that would be my DP statement in a while. Welcome to all sufficiency. I have all sufficiency. It's going to be a reality. It's our reality. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name. Go and prosper. See you tomorrow, 9 a.m. Same time. All right? But right on ground. It's going to be the cap of the meeting. The Holy Ghost is going to move in a mighty way. And it's going to be the breakthrough power of the seed. I'm hearing something in my spirit, but I just want to make sure it's from God. And tomorrow, I would announce it. It's going to be an awesome time in God's presence. If the enemy has discouraged you from giving before, go back to it again. You will see breakthroughs. That's your ticket. I can't deceive you. It's your ticket. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. So the time is 9 a.m. Promises to be a blessing. The address is number 75 of Shola Street of College Road of My Church in Lagos, Nigeria. If there's any first time out here online, we appreciate you. We celebrate you. We thank you for streaming with us. And we invite you to our online and on ground, I beg you, I beg your pardon, on ground and online service tomorrow. For those outside Nigeria, please stream in. Uh, on YouTube and on this uh, channel to mix our audio stream, we'll be streaming the service by God's supply, by the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Promises to be a blessing as we come to the end of this teaching series tomorrow, this breakthrough weekend. All right, the breakthrough conference is going to be powerful. The breakthrough power of the seed and the, and the law of see, uh, giving and sowing, not giving, I prefer sowing, sowing and receiving. All right, until our meeting tomorrow, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. I've forgotten. I usually forget this when I'm online. Praise God. It's time to give our offerings. This is a service. Amen. Here's a service. Sow your seeds now. And um, church media, please put the account details on the screen. Sow your seed. All right. Never. Ah, I wish I could challenge some people, but let the Holy Spirit challenge you. But never come into the presence of God and not sow a seed. There's a couple here. They are actually the only ones. Every meeting we have, they must give. Online service, midweek service, they give. The only couple that any time a church gathers, I've not said it to them personally, but they don't know I've not taken note of it. That's a very powerful principle. Never find yourself in the house of God for any meeting and also your seed. I've just given you another secret. Always do that. Your life will never remain the same again. God bless you. So that's the account details. Give to uh, we have the word CD account there. The so into Tony Onoha Ministries. Okay, the details are there. Uh yes, domiciliary account. Domiciliary account is a Naira account. Uh, but please specify what your seed for. You don't send to the church account and not designate and put offering. If it's offering, if it's tight, if it's a special seed, uh, just give your offerings and the Lord bless you real good. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. You are the one who gave it us. Give it to us. So we are giving it back to you. Just a portion back to you as our worship offering. So in Jesus' name, we declare that this seed is blessed and it's used for the fortress of your work on the earth to raise disciples for you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow for the grand finale. Please don't come alone. I plead with you. Don't come alone. Don't come alone. Don't come alone. It's also a part of seed song. Don't come alone. Get people to church. Invite people to church. Let them hear what you're hearing. There's a blessing in it. The time is 9 a.m. Number 75 of Shola Street of College Road, Almighty Kingdom, Lagos, Nigeria. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance and give you peace. I decree peace and prosperity within your, within your borders. In Jesus' name.
Amen. We are helped of the Lord and our year of special miracles. God bless you. Remember, he upholds all things by the word of his power. Amen.